Lesson 9.5a, Volume of a Triangular Prism. The formula for the volume of a rectangular prism can be used to find the volume of any prism. The volume of a prism is the volume V of a prism is the area of its base B times its height H. I want you to keep in mind that two-dimensional figures have two dimensions, length and width. We write the square units as centimeters squared, inches squared, feet squared, and so on. Three-dimensional figures have three dimensions, length, width, and height. We write the cube units as centimeters cubed, inches cubed, feet cubed, and so on. Prisms have rectangular sides. You can see the rectangular sides on all of these. The surface that is not a rectangle is a base. And the shape of the base names the prism. They are opposite faces. This has a triangle on the top, a triangle on the bottom. As its basis, that's a triangular prism. This has a pentagon on the top and on the bottom. As their bases, this is a pentagonal prism. Hexagon for a base, hexagonal prism. And we have an octagonal prism, an octagon for a base. They're opposite faces. So here we have Sam's tent. It's in the shape of a triangular prism. How many cubic feet of space are in his tent? So the first thing we're going to do is find the base area B of the triangular prism. Now, some of you might think that the base is going to be the part of the tent that's sitting on the grass. It's not. We're going to flip it this way because a triangle will be a base. And we can see right here we've got this triangle and it's got a height of four and we've got six feet here. We're going to use half times the base times the height, half times this six times the four, and we're going to get 12 feet square. Now we need to find the volume of the prism. The volume of a prism is the base area times the height. So we substitute 12 for B, the 12 feet we found for the base area, and 8, because now it's standing up. So 8 is going to be its height. That's equal to 96 feet cubed. So the volume of Sam's tent is 96 cubic feet. Now we found that his tent volume was 96 feet cubed. If the dimensions are doubled, will the volume double? You would think they would. Our base for doubling it would be half of 12 times 8. This was 6, we doubled it to 12. This was 4, we doubled it to 8. So now we're going to do half of 12 times 8. That's going to give us half of 96, which would be 48 feet square for the area of this triangular base. And the volume is equal to that base area times the height. So now instead of 8 feet, we've got 16 feet. We do 48 times 16, and we get 768 feet cubed. So no, the volume will be eight times greater. If we took this 768 and divided it by the original 96, it equals eight. That means 96 times eight is equal to 768, so it's eight times greater. Here we have a triangular prism. It kind of looks like a wedge, doesn't it? And what is the volume of this triangular prism? The first thing we're going to do is find the base area B. It's shaped like a triangle right here. We need the base area is equal to half base times height. So we're going to find this triangle area. If you imagine turning this wedge and flipping it this way, it'll look like this. And then our 6 will be here and our 18 will be here. We're finding this area right here. So we're going to do half of 6 times 18. That's going to give us 54 inches square for our base area, our triangular base area. The volume is equal to that base area times the height of 7, this 7. 
So imagine we've got this base area of 54 inches square, and now we have seven layers of it. So we're going to do 54 times 7, which is equal to 378 inches cubed. So the volume of the prism is 378 cubic inches. So we found the volume of our wedge to be 378 inches cubed. What is the volume if the measures are halved? So we're going to cut the 18 inches in half to 9 inches, the 6 inches in half to 3 inches, and the 7 inches, we're going to cut that into 3 and 5 tenths, 3 and a half. We find the base area of our smaller cut in half measures. It's half times base times height. So we're going to have half times 3 times 9, which is half times 27, which gives us 13 and 5 tenths inches square. 13 and a half inches square. Now to find the volume, remember we've got the layers here, okay? So we're going to have three and a half layers. We do 13 and 5 tenths times the 3.5, and we get 47 and 25 hundredths inches cubed. It's like 47 and a fourth inches cubed. If we cut the measures in half, the volume, 47 and 25 hundredths inches cubed, is one eighth the original volume of 378 inches cubed. If we do 378 divided by the 47.25, it equals 8. Or we can say the 47.25 times 8 is 378. That means this is only an eighth of this one. If we cut the measures in half, the volume is one eighth the original volume. Now that may have seemed a little confusing to you because we cut the measures in half and then it was only one eighth the size of the original. So I want you to take a look at this cube. We have a little tiny cube that's the corner of this larger cube. This little tiny cube is two cube units across, two cube units back, and two cube units tall. The base area of this larger one would be four units by four units. That would be 16 units. So if a cube with a base area of 16 units has its dimensions halved to two units, instead of four by four by four, it's two by two by two, the base area will be four units. Do you see what happened? We cut the dimensions in half from 4 to 2, and the base area went from a 16 down to a 4. And the volume is going to be 64 units cubed, reduced down to 8 units cubed. The volume of the cube is the length times width times height. We had 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64. Now we have 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. So if we double dimensions, the volume will not double. And if we cut the dimensions in half, it will not cut the volume in half. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, we finished the first part of 9.5. We're going to move on to 9.5b and do the volume of a trapezoidal prism. Now, if anything was confusing in this, just rewind the video and watch that part again. I hope I made it clear, though. And I hope you have a great day and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.